And now we wrap up the Gunslinger with a look at the equipment you want to pick up, a general overview of the tactics, and just a quick reflection on the class as a whole. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. And we are wrapping things up for the first edition Pathfinder Gunslinger build guide here. And we are gonna be taking a look at their equipment, some general strategies and tactics and a quick musing about the class overall but before we get into all of that if you're new here to the channel then go on down there to hit the subscribe button and become a regular member here at the gamers den or if you're already listed on such an epic roster of uh, incredible heroes such as that then go on down to hit the like button and share the video far and wide to spread the word about the channel but now let's start talking about the gear you want to pick up so the most important thing for a gunslinger is, well, their guns. And to that end, we're going to go with a combination of two options here, maybe a mix of all of these, but you're going to start off with your long range option, and that is going to either be the musket or the rifle. Now, a musket deals 1d12 points of damage, gets a crit on a 20, and has a times 4 multiplier, with a 40 foot range increment and a misfire chance of 1 to 2, meaning if you roll a 1 or 2, your weapon misfires. Then you have the rifle, dealing 1d10 points of damage with that same crit range and modifier, and has a, a ranged increment of 80 feet with a misfire chance of 1. Now, if, you're, if you have to take muskets because your DM is not allowing more advanced firearms, then the reliable enchantment is going to be good for you to grab. It reduces your misfire chance by one for, and it counts as a plus one bonus. The next one to definitely grab, whichever option you're allowed to go with, is distance, which doubles your ranged increment and counts as a plus one bonus so your musket now reaches out to 80 foot range increments your rifle is 160 foot range increments which is fantastic makes you a really dangerous long range combatant and lastly uh, here is the lucky enchantment which allows the weapon to hold one grit point and this grit point can be used to re-roll attacks so it's nice to have that extra grit point in reserve there and that re-roll attacks option is kind of nice counts as a plus one enhancement modifier then we move on to your one-handed firearms which is either going to be the pistol flintlock wheel lock whichever and revolver now both do 1d8 points of damage have that 20 uh 20 and times four crit range and modifier 20 foot range increments and both have range misfire chances of one the big difference is the revolver holds multiple shots the pistol only has as many shots as it has barrels so probably just two at most in most instances for these enchantments and also for your two-handed firearms definitely consider your bane or alignment options so like holy axiomatic evil whichever the case may be get those enchantments based off of whatever's happening in the campaign if undead are a frequent issue undead bane and holy weapons are going to be absolute gold for you and the last one I would recommend is impervious. Metallic and wooden weapons cannot be rusted, rutted, rutted, rusted or rotted by any means. This will also double their bonus hit points and give them a bonus to hardness and break DC from their enhancement score. So if it's a plus four weapon, they get a plus four bonus to those each of those parts there. And it costs 3,000 gold pieces, so it doesn't count against any enhancement modifiers, meaning you can max that out with as many enchantments or enhancements as you want to get. It's definitely a great one to have, and given how expensive firearms are, you definitely want to keep them protected and going. Then for your armor, we have two options here. One is just kind of a backup because the first is going to be a little bit subject, uh, subjective depending on the aesthetics of the campaign, though I can't imagine many DMs would say no to this. And the first is the Haramaki. It's a plus one armor class bonus, but it does not have a maximum dex limit. So if you've got a dex modifier of nine, well, congratulations, you're all nine of your modifier counts towards your armor class and it has an armor penalty of zero and it's just basically a bit of cloth with chain mail inside of it that wraps around your waist 
The enchantments I would definitely recommend getting for your armor are Determination, which comes in at a whopping 30,000 gold pieces. Once a day, when you hit zero hit points, this will auto-cast the Breath of Life spell on you. This is a must-have for essentially any player, any class, if you can afford it. This will keep you alive. And then the next is Mind Buttressing, which counts as a plus two enhancement bonus. This gives you a plus two resistance bonus on will saves and gives immunity to possession and mental control and charm, compulsion effects like command, things like that. So this is a huge boon to you, given while you do have a good wisdom score, you don't have a good advancement on your will saving throws. So this can be an absolute lifesaver for you and your team. Then after the Haramaki, the next thing I would recommend if you can't get the Haramaki is a Mithril Chain Shirt. This is a plus four armor class with a max dex of six with an armor penalty of zero. In the uh, next following enchantments, I would definitely recommend for either armor that you get is Restful at 4,500 gold pieces. You only need two hours of rest and do not become fatigued while sleeping in this armor and also uh, energy resistance, which comes in at a pretty expensive 18,000 gold pieces. You need to get this for whatever damage type you encounter most. Fire's a pretty common selection, enemy wizards love to blast, and fire damage is a fairly common damage type, as is the, uh, fire immunity and resistance, oddly enough. But if you're up in the frozen north somewhere where you're encountering a lot of ice breath, ice damage, things like that, then, you know, obviously get ice resistance instead. And then from there, it's just a matter of what other, whatever other armor enchantments you feel are going to be useful to you, such as uh, um, buttressing, a, a chance to negate critical hits. Uh, those kinds of things will be, will be useful to you over the course of a campaign. And then for your general equipment, we're going to want to pick up a headband of inspired wisdom coming in at 4,000, 16,000, or 36,000 gold pieces. This will give you a plus two, plus four, or plus six bonus to your wisdom score, boosting your grit, your saving throws is definitely absolute gold to you. Also, look at getting a belt of physical might. Coming in at 10,000, 40,000, or a staggering 90,000 gold pieces, you want the dex and con bonus versions of this, which will give you a plus two, plus four, or plus six to both of those stats. You already know why we want dexterity and constitution. Boost your attacks, your defense, your, your hit points, all of these wonderful things. Next, I would definitely, absolutely, highly recommend to you is the Missive Stone. Coming in at 10,000 gold pieces, this gives you two stones that allow the wearers to communicate within three miles. Given that you're, you're starting off in combat, ideally as a long-range sniper, especially if you have a rifle of distance, you're going to be a ways away and need to be able to communicate with your team. This will allow you to do that. Then, I would also... Uh, recommend that you grab the snap leaf coming in at 750 gold pieces you break this crystalline carving of a leaf to activate feather fall and invisibility so if you're a long distance away as you should start off being and you're posted up on a nice high spot with a good vantage point lots of sight lines and say you attract attention and you start catching all kinds of hell and people are bearing down on you break this jump away to safety and invisibility with them being unable to attack you in most instances also, depending on the nature of your campaign, an iridescent spindle Iune stone can be absolutely invaluable to you. At 18,000 gold pieces, it is a little expensive, but it will sustain a creature without air. So in aquatic campaigns, or if you end up in a vacuum somewhere, or somewhere without breathable atmosphere to you, this will keep you alive. And the next is just a classic item all the way around, the Ring of Protection. Coming in at 2,000 to 50,000 gold pieces, this can give you up uh, from a plus one up to a plus five deflection bonus to your AC and counts towards your touch armor class. So definitely snag one. And the next is also just another classic. It's the Handy Haversack coming in at 2,000 gold pieces. This has two side pouches that hold two cubic feet or 20 pounds of items and materials one center pouch that holds eight cubic feet or 80 pounds of material you can draw items from this without provoking attacks of opportunity which is great although again you should be at a long enough range that that's not as much of an issue this is still great to have 
also look at getting a cloak of resistance coming in at 1,000 to 25,000 gold pieces. This will give you a plus one to a plus five resistance bonus to all your saves. This means, however, that if you get, say, a plus three cloak of resistance, this will override the resistance bonus given to you by your mind buttressing enchantment. You still retain the immunity effects, so it's still worthwhile to have both. And then lastly, we have a couple of items here specific to gunslingers. One is the Endless Bandolier coming in at 15,000 gold pieces. And this has extra dimensional space to hold 60 alchemic cartridges and four pockets able to hold a powder horn or a one-handed firearm, as well as in addition two pockets able to hold two-handed firearms. So and then lastly, we come down to the far-reaching sight, 4,000 gold pieces to start. You attach this to a two-handed firearm, and as a full round action, you can make an attack against the target's touch armor class regardless of the range increment. So definitely an incredible one to have if you have a target wreathed in full plate, magic full plate, and you want to just hit that uh, touch armor class in that instance with one solid attack. So definitely a great opener there for you. And overall, this gear is going to be incredibly useful for you. There are many more options out there, many more enchantments to consider, but this should still be more than enough to get you started and give you an idea of what to plan out for. Again, depending a little bit on what your campaign is. And so you can see what we're doing here with this. We have a solid balance here between having some ability with long range firearms and close range, particularly with that snapshot feet chain that allows you to make multiple attacks of opportunity against oncoming attackers trying to get to you in melee. So you'll be able to fire from long range, rain down death upon your opponents from a long ways away, and as they draw closer to you, you can keep shooting them. And when they get close enough, you abandon, drop, whatever, your two-handed firearm and start going to your pistols and given that uh, you have the endless bandolier or ideally should have the endless bandolier if you're not allowed advanced firearms then you can stuff that with four double barrel uh, flintlock pistols and that way you still have at least eight attacks for your attacks of opportunity and ideally can keep making attacks as you go particularly if you're a tiefling and you're using prehensile tail to help you reload your firearms as you go along and so that's ideally what you're going to be you're just going to keep shooting and keep shooting and keep shooting ideally keeping at least one grip point in reserve so that way you can keep affecting your enemy's touch armor class bonus especially as they get in closer to you now there are a lot of weaknesses with this class overall actually it's not even so much weaknesses as it is the class is just kind of boring i mean for something that should be exciting fast-paced action-packed it's just not all that distinct and really there's a if there is one weakness to this it's that we're kind of spread out a little bit here and are we're trying to balance our long range attacks with our close range and if you want to lean into either of those either going full long range or full close range you're definitely better off going with one of the class archetypes uh, like the pistolero which makes you incredible with pistols or if you want to go with the long range you go with the uh, subclass option uh, I believe it's the M musket master Anyways, there are subclass options that really just kind of emphasize one particular aspect and they change up some of your class options. This otherwise, this class really isn't all that, dis even with the deeds and the grit feature, it's not all that memorable or distinct or flavorful necessarily in an odd sort of way. And it's the swashbuckler runs off of a similar uh, deed function with its panache, but but that feels way more interesting overall and i would say especially further along you're going to be kind of struggling to keep up with your overall damage output i mean the way firearms are written in was not the greatest instead of doing 1d 12 points of damage with a musket i would have put down 2d6 about on par with the greatsword now, it doesn't increase the maximum you're doing, but it does increase that minimum, which makes the weapons that much more useful and feels like a little bit less of a struggle doing damage. And same thing with the rifle. Instead of 1d10, I would have left it, uh, uh, I would have made it a 2d6 as well. 
I think that would have been much more useful. Now, some people might think, oh, with that kind of range and that kind of damage, like, no, 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 no. That's one adjustment I would make to boost the firearm's damage output. It's just rewriting the damage overall. Uh, but overall, yeah, this class kind of really feels like it has a great thematic identity, but it's not overall all that distinct and kind of mechanically comes out to be kind of uninteresting and a little bit repetitive so you're definitely better off trying to figure out what you want to do earlier on and going into pistolero musket master or whatever kind of subclass offers that kind of flavor and variety you're looking for but what do you think? Go on down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Did you like today's video? Did you dislike it? L share your thoughts one way or the other. Hit the like or dislike button. And remember, if you're new here to the channel, go on down below to hit the subscribe button and become a regular member at the Gamer's Den. With all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.